Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, so I can start by introducing myself briefly. So my name is Robin Gibbs. Um, I've been working for L'Oreal Research and Innovation for uh, six years as a machine learning researcher. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we use machine learning um, to create tools that improves the online uh, retail experiences on the brand's website. So a general um, idea that I'm going to, to talk about today is what we call online diagnostic tools. Um, and they are mainly interesting in the case of digital retailers because somehow they manage to enhance or sometimes also mimic or replace the consumer experience that you can have um, in a physical uh, retail, uh, a proper shop. So this general idea works as follows. Uh, the idea is that when a consumer goes on the website, we would like to, have a, to get an, a smartphone image from him and out of this smartphone image, uh, run a set of um, diagnostic tools that are based on machine learning to get a personalized diagnostic that is specific to this consumer in the same way that a beauty advisor uh, would do in the, in, in the physical shop. And out of this um, personalized diagnostic, we want to get a recommended set of products, a product recommendation that is really tailored to the consumer needs. So this is a general um, pipeline um, that we try to apply to uh, a few different uh, cosmetic categories. And the important keyword here is, is the word uncontrolled smartphone image because you're really getting an image from a smartphone that you don't know. Um, so it's going to um, create interesting problems that I'm going to talk about later. So maybe a few examples of, um, of uh, application that we have developed uh, that are following this, uh, this framework. So this one is uh, called the Skin Consult AI, which is, uh, it has been deployed on the, on the, cosmetic, on the brand uh, Vichy. Um, and basically the way this works is that we take this uh, smartphone image and out of that we can assess um, some skin diagnostics that you can see here. So the poor visibility, the firmness of the skin or uh, the different type can, can, uh, types of, um, of wrinkles over the eyes or you know, on the, um, on the cross fits. And out of that we can derive a personalized skin care routine that we can propose to the consumer that can help uh, to enhance the, um, the user experience of the websites. And so the, the, the key is how you do, what, what I'm going to talk about today is how do you actually do this kind of, of diagnostics. And usually, uh, I'm not getting into the details of this one, uh, but this is based on some um, specific algorithm that has really tailored to each category of product. And for this case, we use a lot of dermatologist diagnostic databases that helps us to build this kind of really specified algorithm that know how to assess these clinical signs of um, aging and, uh, and skin. So what I'm going to focus instead uh, today is uh, something that is about the, fo the foundation and particular foundation matching. Because if you're not familiar with the cosmetics market, an important issue when you want to purchase a foundation is that the ranges are really large and you have to find the right foundation for your skin tone. And it can be difficult, especially if you are purchasing on an online website because you cannot actually physically try the product. That's why this makes uh, the, this, the user type of diagnostic tools um, really relevant. So actually this, kind, this type of diagnostics, they're already run in, in various stores. A uh, consumer would come in and they would, um, a beauty advisor would perform a skin color measurement and out of that we can uh, recommend a foundation shade so that exists in the physical store. But how does it work if you are an online retail? Then you have to use this to get a smartphone image instead of the skin color measurements. And what we want to do is to try to set up uh, this kind of pipeline to help the consumer to buy a, um, a foundation products, even though she might not have never tested it in, 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 uh, in uh, the physical world. So here you have an example um, experience of this, uh, which has been deployed uh, for several brands in China. So you can see that the consumer is sending, in this case, it's a video, but it could be an image as well. And uh, basically, out of that, we are able to uh, recommend the set of shades, and she can uh, literally train them on to confirm that it matches well as though. And we can, oh, sorry. You can also see the same user experience um, on the different brains and the same ID. You get a, a consumer image, and then out of the consumer image, you make a skin diagnostic. And out of that, we are able to derive the set of shades uh, that are the most adapted to, to your particular condition. Um, so, why is this complicated, and why do we actually need machine learning to do that? Um, so when you think about an application like this, analyzing the skin color to the right, the right shade of the, the, the foundation, um, you might think about, okay, I will get nice looking images with um, women of, with different skin, uh, color of skin, and then 
also the merger can say, you know, they have a color and it's going to be the formation color. Well, in practice, what you are getting is more something like this. So what you have here is two different persons uh, on the left and on the right. And what you can see is that if the same person takes multiple images, um, you will get, you will end up having images in which the skin pixels color looks very, very different. And this is due to the, light, the changes in the lighting conditions, so the light color on my outside or inside, or also the light direction is going to impact a lot the, the, skin, the skin appearance radiation, as you can see here. And this makes things really complicated. Uh, given this pixel, what is the, the formation I have to recommend? And if I have an accurate system, I actually should be um, recommending the same foundation for each of the, th of the three images. The, and the one which is, that is the one which is actually matching the real skin color of the person. So it's a, it's a complex problem, and uh, it's actually a problem for which machine learning is really useful. Um, because it's really useful in all the cases where you have, um, I would say, a really open problem or an under-constrained problem. So what I'm going to, um, to to deep dive into during this presentation is this particular technology. And in particular, this presentation is based on a paper that we published, um, I think, in 2019, something like this. And this, that is um, explaining how do we actually run uh, this skin color diagnostic and how it was based. And if you are interested in that, I would encourage you to read it. So I'll try to do a, a brief summary uh, so, so that we can then uh, take a few questions. Um, so basically, when you look at uh, this uh, color type of color measurement, it's not specific to skin color, it's something that you want to do in many different industries. There are two types of methods. Um, what you have on the left is called uh, calibration targets based. So the idea is that you are using um, what we call the color checker. So it's a little reference target for which the, the color of the patch is already known. And basically, you use that as a reference to compute what's the actual um, color of, of this. So this is really used in, um, in uh, photography, in photography studios, in movies, for instance. And also a type of, another type of, the problem with that is that, sorry, uh, to, the problem with the calibration target is that in practice, the consumer don't have this, this type of target in their home. So you cannot ask them to, to have this reference charge. You have to find a solution without it. Um, the other issue that you may have is, there's also, sorry, the other type of uh, problems of uh, methods um, would be what we call scene information based, and that's where the machine learning kicks in. Um, so this is actually a, a type of method that is nowadays embedded in all the, the cameras, in particular smartphone cameras, in which you actually um, look at the elements of the scene and out of that try to infer what's the light color, what are the light condition to actually color balance the image. So we really often this is called white balance, and actually this is run today in all of the camera to make sure that the colors in your um, camera in your image that you take them swept. So we're going to be inspired by these two different methods. So the problem that we're trying to solve is uh, like this. Given what we call the image in the wild, that is an image with, taken with unknown camera, unknown lighting, unknown conditions, what we want to do is to estimate a skin color measurement. And by skin color measurement, what we um, actually mean is that we have a scan that we uh, use in the shop. So you scan three points on the face that you can see here, and you average this uh, color measurement. And that's what we call the skin color measurement. And that's what we're trying to reproduce um, with our model. So really replacing the in-shop uh, experience by the online experience. Let's go to jump back. Um, yeah, so you, we, we collect this kind of images over, you know, about seven, um, so it's six or seven uh, panelists, and you can see that we are getting, you know, this kind of skin tone distribution. And obviously, and this is really common in machine learning, you have some, you know, discrepancy in the distribution. So you have to take that into account when you're actually looking at the results of your product. <clears throat> so uh, let's get into it and see um, what are the, the problems here. So as I explained before, uh, the major issue is that the when you look at an image, the color of the light is going to affect the appearance of this pixel. So if you take a nice baseline, so a really simple method um, in which you, you, you segment the pixel using a new model, the skin pixel, and then you take the median or the average of the pixel and say, okay, this is the skin color. Um, if you do that, actually, it's not going to work. It's going to work uh, really bad. So what you have on the right here is the actual run through skin color measurement of this person. And you can see that in this image you would have it, oh, sorry, you would have predicted a really red skin color because of the red light. So this is really 
the kind of uh, system that's going to fail um, in practice. And so the, we measure the, the error here using what we call delta E, which is a color measurement error. Uh, this is that is you know standard in the field of uh, color science. And uh, basically, to give you a rough idea, if, if this goes below three or two, um, the color looks uh, really, really similar. So this we cannot do. So we have to, we have to do something a bit more um, complicated. Um, I talked to you about uh, the color charts, the, the color checkers. So we have them in our databases. Um, so it's really interesting because if you still take the same person, then you ask her to take different images with different color checkers. Um, and you actually look at the, the color of the, the batch here. So you observe that the color changes because of the light variation. And we can actually use this because we know the actual colors of the, in the color checker. So we can use this discrepancy to compute a color correction and to remove the actually uh, the actually bias that is induced by the color of the changes in the in the color of the light. And if you do that, you are getting a much more consistent skin appearance. So that's so this is good. Um, however, you have two issues. The first one is that it's sometimes going to fail because you can see here the issue is that uh, she's holding the color checker under you know a light which is not the same as the light which is cast on her face. So the features that we are getting here are wrong and we end up correcting the image in the wrong way. And the second problem is that actually um, it kind of solves those general color cast issues, but so you, because of the illumination that is very directional, you still get a lot of you know, heterogeneity and it's actually not really easy to derive the skin color out of that, as you will see in a minute. So if we take this approach, um, we use this color checker, we collect the color in the image, and then out of that, we compute, you know, the average, the average uh, pixel, and we, we can see that, you know, um, you have maybe divided your, your error by at least, you know, maybe two. Um, so this is getting more interesting. However, you can still, still see that in some cases like this, this is really fading because if you have a directional light or what we call specular reflection in the skin, uh, it's difficult to figure out what's the, what's the, the skin of, the, the, the color of the, the skin. And that's where um, machine learning becomes helpful. So what we what we propose to do here is to actually call the train a neural network that we call LabNet. And that is an end-to-end neural network that we that we learn a color regression problem um, using the color measurement as labels. In the, and the idea here is to learn um, skin specialized color estimation instead of just computing the skin pixel, the average skin pixel out of the skin pixels. What we want to do is to Try to train a model that learns how to extract this kind of information from the skin, and uh, you know, um, removing this uh, bias of light and this bias of specular diabetes that we can have with skin. Next year, we're going to get to the two approaches, and um, the one on the left, in which um, we would perform color correction and then feed the color corrected image to the model, and also um, natural uh, what we call the real turn method, which is directly feeding the non-color corrected image to the, to the model. So if you're familiar with deep learning, uh, this is a really, I would say, standard method, um, good deep convolutional network. And at the end of the network, um, we use a dense block with a size of three uh, neurons to actually reproduce the color management, the, the color estimation. So it's not RGB, it's LAD, it's a different color space, um, which is a bit more interesting um, because if you take a distance into this color space, it's actually closer to from an actual uh, perceptual distance, but uh, this is getting a bit specific. Um, and the key point here, the, the key thing is here that if you want to train this kind of model, you need to have a database with a high variability in terms of skin color and illuminance, because your model has to understand that it needs to estimate the right skin color for all of these three images and for all of the three images. So that's really important to have in your data set the kind of variation that you're going to encounter in practice. So if you, do, if you train this and look at the results, it looks like this. Um, basically, the, so, so we take the image, we, we color correct it, and then we feed it to the, to the network, color correct using the color checker, and then we feed it to the network. You can see that the, the error is really falling. We are getting to the edge of, of almost four, uh, which is you know really good enough to do a information chain recommendation. So this is really getting good. And uh, the idea beyond that is that the model learns to actually ignore all the specular reflection and it's, it's learning some special features of representation that are really um, adapted to the skin. So that's, that's good news. However, the issue is that in practice, 
you can assume that they don't have these targets. So this would work if you could actually ship the targets and then ask the people to take it with an image, but it's not what we can very practice if they really pass it. So now what happens if we remove the color correction step? So this is a differently trained model that was always trained without color correction. And what you can see here is that um, really surprisingly, you managed to, so of course it's not working as well as using the color correction step, uh, but still you get to really a different performance. The loss of performance is not that big and compared to the advantages that you have of removing the targets. And also you can see that it's really uh, more accurate than um, any of the, um, any of the, uh, the previous method that was not based on, on deep learning. So we have the intuition that um, this, is, um, this is kind of working, um, but how can we, can, we, can we test that? What's the most what's the right way to look at the performance? Um, as I mentioned, the big issue here is uh, you know, the variation in the, in the lighting uh, color estimation. So what we do here is that uh, in our database, we take the, the color checker card and then we look at those uh, white patches that you have in the left here. And then out of the white patches pixel, we take the average and we, we derive the, from that, we can derive the illuminance color. Because if the, if the white look orange like this on the image, it means that the color was, was the light was orange. And that you have a warm, what we call a warm color temperature. And if it's really white, it means that you know it's really natural. And if you do this, it's a really interesting way to look at this kind of problems because what happens is on the left, you have a, a little graph that's showing you the performance of the baseline model, the which in which the one in which you just look at the pixels and say, okay, this is the skin color. And that's what I did in the beginning. And if you, if you look at that, you see that when the light is white, it's well balanced. Uh, that's where the, be the best performance is. And as soon as the lights keeps start changing um, really, uh, really uh, cold or really warm, um, then your model starts to behave uh, uh, much worse because you know this light, this slight change of color is adding a bias to the model compared to the white lights. And what's really interesting is that you can see on the right is the results with our model, and you can see that the performance of the of the color estimation is actually really stable across the changes of light. And it's really a nice way to demonstrate that this kind of model learns to remove the, 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 the impact of the uh, light uh, in, um, in, the, in the image. So it's really interesting because you manage to get an accurate skin color diagnostic. And this is some uh, figures about the skin color because I, as I, about the performance across the skin colors. Um, maybe it's a bit difficult to read, but basically the idea is that we're comparing the different approaches and our model uh, without the, um, the color checker is the red model. So you can see that we are overperforming most of the images. Um, and also you can see that, you know, it's working much better for light skin tones. And this is actually really due to the initial um, distribution I was showing to you. This is a really typical problem in deep learning. So what this means is that you need to find a way to collect some data to get more a balanced distribution to make your system more accurate in this kind of skin tones. So this is really a non-problem that can be easily solved. Okay, so uh, that will wrap up. Maybe just in a few words, uh, what I what I wanted to show you uh, was um, how you can uh, try, how you can build some interesting diagnostic tools that you can run on mobile devices for featuring in digital store, and actually some of the interesting machine learning questions that arise when you use this kind of um, consumer diagnostics tools for images that are not controlled that are from uh, any uh, smartphone images. So thank you for following, and uh, if you have questions, I will be happy to, to take them. Okay, thank you very much for following. Bye.